they're the ones who raise the bar. The ones dedicated to providing care in the most demanding of circumstances. The ones that understand the healing benefits of kindness and compassion. They're the people of Sarah Bush Lincoln, and they set the bar high. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care, right here, close to home. Carl is redefining healthcare around you, innovating new solutions and offering all levels of care when and where you need it. Investing in technology and research to optimize healthcare, Carl, with Health Alliance, is always at the forefront to help you thrive. Meeting the ever-changing healthcare needs of our communities, Paris Community Hospital Family Medical Center is now Horizon Health with the same ownership, management, providers, and employees. Horizon Health provides patient care and promotes wellness to the communities of East Central Illinois. At HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital, we are at work transforming heart care, rebuilding knees and hips, delivering new generations, and focused on providing health care to you. We are HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital. Hi, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Being Well. My name is Kean Armstrong and I'm your host today. We're going to be talking about cardiac rehab and I have some folks joining me from Horizon Health in Paris. I have Morgan Kincaid, a rehab supervisor and doctor of physical therapy. I also have Shannon Jones, a cardiac rehab nurse, and on the end over there we have Mike Marks who is a registered respiratory therapist and the respiratory manager. So we've got a full group of people today to talk about cardiac rehab. I'm excited because um, I think this is something that people may not know that is available if they're having some issues. So I want to start off with what exactly is cardiac rehab? Well, cardiac rehab, it's a medically supervised program and it's for patients that have recently undergo undergone a cardiac event, um, whether it be a heart attack or stent placement or um, open heart procedure. We offer two different phases in cardiac rehab and uh, phase two is for recent um, procedures and that entails um, usually a 36 week program and or 36 sessions, excuse me, and um, they tend to come about three times a week and um, they are closely monitored. They're put on the monitors. And then we also offer a phase three uh, program, which is more for the patients that have been, they've had a cardiac event, but it may have been several years ago. And um, they just, they've already finished the, the phase two and they wanted to continue with the phase three program. Um, there's three components that we tend to focus on um, with the rehab and um, the first component is an exer exercise um, plan that we, um, we, t we tailor for their needs. So we do an assessment, we uh, do a fitness profile and we don't just look at one aspect of things but we're looking at their strength, their endurance, their flexibility and, um, and then we tailor the programs best to suit their needs. Um, number two, we focus on education, which is not just um, the exercise program, but also nutrition and, um, and smoking cessations, medications that they may be on. Um, also, it may be you know, things leading up to cardiac events. So it's a well-rounded type of program. And the third and final um, is we focus on um, emotional and social support. So, and that being, um, you know, we want to make sure a lot of people that have these events, they're nervous, they don't know what to expect, and we want to be there for them to, you know, offer the support. They may be anxious, they may be a little depressed, and it's our job to try to counsel them through. That sounds really good and helpful for these people because they've, offer, they've already gone through something pretty um, scary mm -hmm. um, with their heart. Um, so, you know, knowing what to do and how much to do, I mean, that all plays into this, it sounds like. Would either of you like to add on to what she just mentioned? Uh, yeah. The, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. The, the, <laughs> um, the benefit of our program is that we live in a rural area, and so most of our patients have to drive, you know, at least 30 minutes, if not an hour, hour and a half, hour and a half to get to their cardiologist. So our cardiac nurses act as, you know, another check-in for those patients. So those patients are seeing them three times a week. And so 
it, it's a safe environment for them to be able to start doing those activities they want to do again. Um, whether that's golfing, whether that's playing with their grandkids, no matter you know, what activity they want to get back to, they can, they can offer you know, starting up those activities in a safe environment. So they are monitored when they're there. So they're starting, you know, you've got to start small and work your way up, but they are, they're monitored. And so if something were to happen or there's something they're starting to see their vitals are changing, then they could catch that early on and they would be in the right place. They're at a hospital setting so they can, can catch those. Um, and then they're just that check-in point, you know, those, especially like those post-op patients, they, um, can look at their incisions and make sure there's no infection or, you know, all those little things that you um, have to do post-operatively, these, our cardiac nurses can keep an eye on that so that um, it's, it's, the patients are in a safe environment and, and can have a medical professional to bounce ideas off of and, okay, is this, should I be feeling this way or is this okay? And, and the cardiac nurses have so much experience especially in cardiology, mm -hmm. that, that they can reassure them that that's normal. It's normal to take a little bit of time to build back mm -hmm. up, um, back to yourself, so. Okay, Mike, did you want to add on to that as I well? I was just going to say, we have a, a, a really good staff. They're professional, they all um, have a very good track record of uh, helping patients. And that's why we're excited also to add the pulmonary side to the mm -hmm. rehab. Um, it's a little slower for the patient. We want to build them up slowly so they can um, work, work their breathing and their quality of life is at the end. That's what we're looking to do is increase the quality of life. Okay. So, so do they start out with cardiac rehab and then they move into the pulmonary side or do they work hand in hand along the way? We work alongside cardiac rehab, but we take any, anybody basically that's having any kind of breathing difficulty that they know it's slowing them down in life. And what we do is on the cardiac side, they want to push them a little harder to get the heart up. On the pulmonary side, we go slow and just like slowly uphill. And we want to get them to where they're uh, stronger, mm -hmm. easier for them to walk, easier for them to play with their grandkids. It's that whole quality of life. We're going to get, get them to improve their quality of life. So, yeah, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, two separate programs. Okay. So one is uh, cardiac rehab is for someone who's had a cardiac event. Most of the times, um, insurances are covering in the past year. So that um, could be like Shannon mentioned, a, a heart attack, a valve replacement, an open heart surgery, um, heart failure, uh, even as as intense as a heart transplant. Mm. So that is the cardiac side. And then pulmonary rehab, um, they have their own diagnoses, which Mike can... Um, Anybody that's diagnosed by their physician with any problem, breathing problems, we will take them, assess them, and see if, if this is the right program. And again, we do the same thing. We, we make a detailed plan of action per each patient. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we don't put everybody in just the same thing. Right, because so everybody's you, different exactly. and everybody has different issues. So um, we get that plan together, we talk with their physician, and once we're on <clears> an agreed <throat> plan, then we go ahead and bring them in and start them. Okay, so do the cardiologist, the pulmonologist, the rehab nurse, the physical therapist, all of you work as a team together? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, what's great is that our patients love that group atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We have a group of guys, I call it like the, the men's coffee shop because <laughs> there's these group of guys that have been coming for 15, 20 years, those phase three years who, um, you know, they finished their phase two program where they were on the telemetry and we can continue with them. Um, it's a private pay program, but they can continue just like a gym membership, but we're monitoring their vitals. And those, those guys, they make sure that they're there at the same time. And it, it literally is a coffee shop for them um, where they can come and they like that group atmosphere because they're encouraging each other and they can, you know, just carry on what they're doing their day-to-day -day activities. Well, it's probably nice to bounce off of one another too, like some of the things that they're struggling with or some of the things that they can help each other with, you know, in daily life that maybe, you know, just comes up among their conversation. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you mentioned that it was monitored um, and it's happening at the hospital. Does any of this happen outside of the hospital? Do they have things that they need to do at home as well, like exercise homework or different things like that? Basically on the diet, mm -hmm. it's really up to them once they go home, but we really stress 
a good diet and we, we have a lot of education during the classes to help them and on the pulmonary side we as they do on the cardiac we go through the medications make sure they're taking them right make sure that each medicine goes with the other one so we we pretty well make a plan of action for each patient even even for their home life okay so when you say that there is monitoring going on um, is it a monitor that they wear. Talk, talk me through that and what that looks like for the cardiac and the pulmonary. The phase two, um, our phase two patients do wear heart monitors. So initially they come in, we do an assessment, we set them up with the program and tailor it to their needs. Um, we do frequent vital signs. We always do a uh, resting vital signs, then we do vital signs while they're exercising. We want their heart rate to substantially be um, about 30 beats faster than they're resting. And then we'll do a recovery, um, recovery vital signs. So um, they're, they're wearing the monitor throughout the whole uh, thing and we have one nurse. At Horizon Health we have two nurses that are available and one of the nurses watches the monitor the entire time. And she's really just looking for any um, abnormality or any change in the rhythm and that's why it's important for them to have cardiac rehab because with that being said, you know, if we catch something, we're able to call the cardiologist right away and we're also able to inform the patient of what's going on and get them the treatment that they may need. Yeah, which is very scary for I think people who have just, you know, had something done because I had a friend that went through this and she was so anxiety ridden, like I don't know how far to push myself, I'm scared I'm going to do some more damage, I'm scared something's going to happen to me. So, you know, once you get them to a point where they are feeling more comfortable, I think that that helps in so many ways. Yeah, it does. Did you want to add on to that, Mike? Yeah, on the, on the pulmonary side, we, we push our patients to go slow, mm -hmm. where they want the heart to raise, where we don't necessarily want our pulmonary patients to get a heart it's higher. Mm -hmm. We, we kind of go slow and we build up as time goes by. So it's a little different, but it's the same. And we keep the same. Um, somebody's there taking vitals throughout the whole time. And we, we use a pulse ox, which shows the oxygenation. We keep pretty close tabs on that, on the pulmonary patients. So. All right. Sounds good. So let's say um, that somebody is coming in, they've been diagnosed. Um, I guess by the physician or the cardiologist or the pulmonologist, and then um, they've they're put on this treatment plan or this rehab plan. So um, and everybody's different that we know. Mm -hmm. So walk me through an experience. You know, if somebody comes in, what are some of the things that they will actually be doing during rehab? And give me a, for an example, like if you know if they had a heart attack or if they had a stent or something. Give me a little bit of variation here and some different examples. Sure. Um, well, first we set them up, we do, the, we do an initial assessment with them and um, based on their assessment and their physical abilities, we'll set them up with the program. And we walk them through um, different low impact exercises, but we want to incorporate aerobic activities, which incorporates the treadmills, the stationary or recumbent bikes, um, our UBE machines. And then we also want to focus on a little bit of um, strength training too, where as they are advanced, we'll start, um, we'll start with you know, using some weights. We don't um, necessarily, people that have had open heart surgeries, we're gonna wait on the weights. We're gonna go a little slower with them. And we're gonna tailor the exercises. If they are having a hard time when they're on the treadmill, they're gonna take breaks and they're gonna take it you know, at their own pace. And then gradually they'll see themselves progressing. And we use a fitness profile report to initially start to see where their level is. And then um, we'll, we, re we revisit that um, profile every month to see how they're progressing. So based on that, um, someone with a stint, they may be able to, to you know, go full, the full 30 minutes without stopping at all. Okay, now is cardiac rehab always necessary after something or is it just depend on the person? It depends on, I mean, I personally think that it's definitely necessary for everyone. Um, statistics have shown, if you look at American Heart Association, uh, there are huge advancements and um, outcomes are tremendous if they actually have done the, done the program versus if they try to do it on their own. The reason being is because there's nurses there, there's other people that have experienced the same things as them, 
and it's just an easier way to have to better yourself when you're there having a coach, a counselor, a nurse, and if you have any concerns, you have other people there that are able to talk to you about it. Okay. Mike, when we're talking about the pulmonary rehab, are there uh, breathing exercises? Are there different things that... Yes, we have uh, different options. We, we kind of keep it light. Um, we have where we uh, teach them to breathe mm -hmm. uh, deeper and, well, actually the, the therapist will uh, have it like a windmill and have them blow on it mm -hmm. and see how long and how long they can keep that going. It kind of strengthens their breathing. Uh, we also have different devices. This is called a acapella or might be known as a flutter. Um, if you take a deep breath and blow through there, it'll cause a vibration deep down and it'll help loosen up any secretions that <clears throat> someone uh, like a COPD or might have mm -hmm. to help get that out and help them breathe a little easier. And then we do a lot of education. This is uh, for the uh, meter dose inhalers. When you use this, you get most of the medicine. They say actually 55 times more than if you just squirt it into the back of your... With an uh, inhaler? Yes. Is that what you're mm -hmm. talking about? Okay. So we do a lot of education with our patients so they take their medicines right and they also use the devices correctly because it really does it. It improves their breathing. So. Okay. So you mentioned COPD. What are some other things that people struggle with who would go through pulmonary rehab? We also take, uh, on the cardiac side, we get like uh, a patient with chronic CHF, which is kind of the pulmonary side of it backing up into the lungs, um, a little bit of fluid. After a while, that takes a, a stress on the lungs, so we bring them in, and there again, we work with them to help them regain the strength and the ability to breathe and go on and make their life better. Okay. Um, asthma, long-term asthma. We also get uh, patients with any kind of lung disease that might, they may have to take out part of the lung or um, chronic bronchitis, just any kind of <clears throat> disease that might affect your breathing. We, we will take a look at, at what's going on and how we can help improve. Okay. Um, Morgan, we've talked a little bit about the monitoring and um, the nurses and the doctors being on hand. Is, is that the main difference on how uh, cardiac rehab differs in a facility versus going to the gym? Explain to me the differences there so people at home can understand, you know, the safety, I guess, involved and some mm -hmm. different things that come into play. Right, so the monitor, you know, especially on the cardiac side, that they're monitored with telemetry, so they're watching the cardiac rhythms. Um, and then the education is very important as well. So uh, for cardiac rehab, they're educating on any modifiable risk factors. So that's um, nutrition, that, that is smoking cessation, um, that is sodium intake, um, you know, stroke symptoms, anything that we want to be monitoring, making lifestyle changes. So we're looking at the body as a whole. It's more of like a, an overall wellness program. Um, medications, you know, monitoring and making sure that, you know, they have the right medications mixed together um, and, and speaking with the doctors if there's anything, you know, two different doctors are, are working together on. Um, they're also, as far as doing a gym membership and the, the um, safety of it, we, on the pulmonary side, the, there's a physician that stops by every 30 days. And so that's, that's a requirement by Medicare that a physician will stop by and, and speak with the patients. So that's a huge benefit to have a, a doctor just readily available for those pulmonary patients to speak with um, because the pulmonary patients are very sick. Um, and that's kind of the difference between um, cardiac and pulmonary is, like he said, that it's a much slower progression because those patients usually are having difficulty breathing. Um, and those patients, it could be very scary. Um, I can't imagine, I know we had talked before the show that you have a child with asthma and I do too. And I can't imagine, you know, I've seen them struggle to breathe and I can't imagine these patients if they went to a gym um, and sometimes the, you know, the air conditioning isn't as controlled or it's a warmer environment, which makes it di more difficult for them to breathe. But that feeling of having a difficulty breathing, um, you know, they know that the respiratory therapist is there if they need it. I've seen the respiratory therapist give nebulizer treatments on site during the pulmonary class if they need it. So that's a great service that they can offer 
and it puts them at ease. And I think it's the same thing with the cardiac program is, you know, I just had a new surgery. I just had open heart surgery. Um, that would be really intimidating to go to a gym yes. after having a surgery like yeah, that. Absolutely. And so I think it really puts them at ease knowing that they have medical personnel there that if something were to happen, that they would be readily available. We're attached to the hospital. Um, we have an AED right there. We have the ability to call a rapid response and just that access to physicians if we needed it. Okay. Um, and they both have experienced that before. Mm -hmm. um, Shannon just had one you know, last week that needed additional attention. And um, it could be something as simple as, and I don't wanna say it's simple, but a patient going into AFib mm -hmm. where okay, your rhythm, you know, you're not normally an AFib and today you are. Right. You need to have a conversation with your physician or it could be um, like last week where their heart rate was very low and they needed more immediate attention, Okay. medical attention. When you mentioned the phase two and the phase three, I'm curious why there isn't a phase one or if there is, what it is. And then also is the education portion included within that 36 weeks of cardiac rehab or is it extra? How does that work? Yeah, with the phase two, um, the education is definitely provided with the 36 sessions. And phase three is actually, they're still getting the education, even though some of those patients have been here for 13 years, they're still, you know, if they have questions or medications um, have changed, then they're still able to ask us those type questions. The only difference really between the phase two and the phase three is that the phase three isn't they're not, they don't have to wear the cardiac monitor, so they're more independent, but um, the phase two, we're watching them strictly throughout the whole exercise session. Um, but for both of them, you know, we're on site at, the, at all times. Okay. We've got about two or three minutes left here. Um, we talked about you want to improve a person's life, so you've got goals. Once they finish the rehab program, um, and they're home doing some things. Do you send them some things home um, in order to stay on task? And, and do they have further goals when they're done with rehab? Let's kind of wrap this up a little bit and talk about what happens on how they continue to improve their life after they've worked with all of you. So we, we encourage them to stay phase three. Mm -hmm. So that phase three is so that they can continue, um, you know, that we help them along their wellness journey. We want them to continue that wellness journey. So we, the phase three is um, $6 a session. So it, we try to make it reasonable for most uh, patients that they can continue to come and continue to get that support. But if not, then they have, we hope that we ha have given them the tools um, to continue to improve their lifestyle and make it make healthier choices. Okay, would you like to add anything onto that? Ultimately, our goal is we want to not only it, it, we want it to be well-rounded. So we want to help improve them cardiac-wise, but we also want to improve them their lifestyle choices, um, smoking cessations, also you know education that they can further take with them on nutrition and help prevent them from having frequent hospital stays. Um, and just to take things with them that they can teach others. All right, thank you, Mike. I have seen <clears throat> the pulmonary and the cardiac side of it for years, and just watching these patients when they come in, how, how they act and move, and you could tell things bring them down. And when they leave, well, and a lot of them don't leave, most of them wanna stay mm -hmm. and continue the phase three, and for life, that's great. But they're so much better, they're so much just happier. It's, yeah. it's, it's so wonderful to see. Yeah, I can imagine you're helping improve people's lives from situations that they've had to deal with, health scares and so on, and you're improving their life, and then you're giving them the independence to know that they can do it on their own. Mm -hmm. So how can uh, folks find out about these programs? So um, it, they both require a doctor's referral, mm -hmm. so they would just need to talk with their their provider and get a referral um, from them to be able to come and begin the program. And then um, we have a, a website at myhorizonhealth.org um, to get into the Horizon Health program. There's additional information on, online as well. All right, thank you all so much for joining me today. This has been really informative. And I wanna thank all of you for tuning in today for this episode of Being Well, and we'll see you next week. At HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital, we are at work transforming heart care, rebuilding knees and hips, delivering new generations, and focused on providing health care to you. We are HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital. 
Meeting the ever-changing healthcare needs of our communities, Paris Community Hospital Family Medical Center is now Horizon Health with the same ownership, management, providers, and employees. Horizon Health provides patient care and promotes wellness to the communities of East Central Illinois. Carl is redefining healthcare around you, innovating new solutions and offering all levels of care when and where you need it. Investing in technology and research to optimize healthcare, Carl, with Health Alliance, is always at the forefront to help you thrive. They're the ones who raise the bar. The ones dedicated to providing care in the most demanding of circumstances. The ones that understand the healing benefits of kindness and compassion. They're the people of Sarah Bush Lincoln, and they set the bar high. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care, right here, close to home.